Here's an interesting piece of information, and while I'd heard rumor of it, I hadn't actually got around to investigating it. But it looks like there are a couple of states that are looking to replace New York as the financial center in the country. In fact, it looks like they don't have a political affiliation that would make it very difficult to operate in an environment that would attract business investment, which is why they could end up being the financial centers or center of the United States, which would be wild because, well, the states they're considering have an incredible amount of talent. They have all of the quote unquote diversity that you would want, and they really do have some very attractive situations when it comes to taxes. So let's take a look at a story that, like I said, I really hadn't done a lot of research on. It seems that Florida and Texas are becoming the Wall Street of the South. Sunbelt states are luring financial services uh, with lower taxes, attractive labor pools, and more opportunities for expansion. I think that's fascinating. Now, there are groups involved here that I'm not certainly fond of, but I do find it interesting, and this is a story from Quartz, by the way, um, that this is what's happening. So Wall Street banks, hedge funds, and other financial institutions are looking to expand their operations. Uh, they're increasingly turning to the business-friendly Sunbelt. This is unsub unsurprising. Why? Well, everybody's looking for a better deal, especially in the economy we have right now and in the business of greed, which is what the financial sector services is all about. Uh, they need every advantage they can get so they can continue to post ridiculous numbers, maybe even numbers that aren't realistic, but we won't dive into that. These uh, financial firms, like other businesses, have moved into the region and are being drawn in by a number of factors as I mentioned, but also lower costs of living and doing business, opportunities for expansion, and less government red tape, which is something that, well, if you recently heard, Gorch has actually written a book on the fact that uh, we're paying too much and we're paying in the form of adherence to laws and regulation. The Sun Belt comprises of 15 states lining the southern portion of the U.S., which I will report to you I actually live in, at least right now. The region is home to three of the seven states with no income taxes, including Texas and Florida, making it especially attractive in, to firms. More than 25,000 businesses relocated to Texas from other states between 2010 and 2019. By the way, a trend that actually accelerated, if I'm not mistaken, but they're bringing with them more than 281,000 jobs, according to data from the Federal Reserve Bank of Dallas. Wow. The southward trends were accelerated by the global crisis, especially when the remote work made living in and working from them, uh, well, traditional northern hub cities like New York and Chicago, a choice rather than a requirement because it's just plain cheaper. And there's an easier lifestyle where you're not spending every extra dollar you have just to survive or get a cup of coffee. So from 2022 to 2023, a total of 593 companies moved their headquarters, an increase of 29% from a year earlier. According to the data from moving company, Hire a Helper. These moves weren't all companies moving north to south, but Texas and Florida welcomed the largest influx of corporate headquarters. I find that fascinating. Several financial services giants. Let's try that again. Several financial services giants have either expanded their presence in Sunbelt cities with swanky new multi-million dollar campuses in recent years or relocated altogether in search of sunnier days and more balance sheet friendly tax rules. These are some of the biggest moving and growth stories within the sector. So you got JP Morgan Chase, Goldman Sachs, Wells Fargo. They all invested hundreds of millions of dollars into sprawling mega campuses in and around Dallas-Fort Worth met metropolis area. They're designed to house thousands of employees. Alliance Bernstein uh, transitioned more than 1,000 jobs to its new headquarters in downtown Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, Carl Icahn moved his asset management firm, Icahn Capital, to Sunny Isles Beach, Florida in early 2020 after decades in New York. Hmm. You're going to start seeing that more and more frequently. Investment manager 
Elliott Management moved its headquarters to West Palm Beach, Florida in 2020. Charles Schwab completely moved its headquarters from San Francisco to Dallas in 2021. Why? Well, <laughs> it's way, 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 way cheaper. Uh, Kathy Woods, ARK Investment Management, relocated to St. Peter Petersburg, Florida in 2021, and Ken Griffin's Hedge Fund Citadel migrated its headquarters from Chicago to Miami in 2022. Not to mention, we all know that Space Daddy moved almost all of his things away from states that were harming his businesses to Texas, which makes a lot of sense. Currently, the South is the fastest growing region in terms of population and was home to all the top 10 fastest growing U.S. metro areas from 2022 to 2023, according to Census Bureau data. This goes on and on and talks about all the advantages and reasons that companies, especially financial services, relocate. All of them, well, good. In fact, I don't blame any of these companies for moving on because they basically contributed to the complete destruction of whatever state they were in, let's hope that they learn something this time and don't do that to themselves again. Because that's ultimately what happens. The reason you become successful in a given industry is because of the population around you. Pretty soon, you've sponged up all the talent and population that can do the job. And as you continue to expand in a given region, you now start to already artificially inflate wages. And there are times when spreading yourself around as a company, even if it has additional expenses associated, is a good thing. But if you're looking to create a central hub for everything that you do, and you have a significant portion of your talent that'll move with you, there's no reason to go off and find and most likely benefit from a greener pasture, specifically if your business can take advantage of those, well, advantages that are offered by a state like Texas or Florida, mainly in the form of taxes and regulation, which I hope they're able to maintain. Anyway, what do you think about this growing trend? Do you think this is a no-duh moment? Do you think this is something that these corporations should have been looking at years ago? Do you think that the political makeup of some of these corporations is going to, well, basically destroy the very reason that they move their this new location in the first place? And do you think that it would be wise for a part of corporate governance to just recognize that they don't want to recreate the same situation they just fled from? Hard to say if you start putting politicians in positions of power where they're going to basically disassemble everything that made you move to a location in the first place. But hey, I'm just repeating myself right now, and I don't want to do that. But I do want to know from you, is this going to be something that we're going to see as a trend moving forward? Do you think we're also going to see basically Wall Street and new investment capitals created out of one or two states in the South? Um, I think so. But what do you think? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments section below. And as always, be sure to take care of yourself. Take care of others. And until next time, see ya.